Have you ever been interested in advertising for your company, but you don't know where to start? Well, today's episode is for you. Welcome to the Content Marketing Engineer Media Mini Series, where we're learning from media experts on how working with external news outlets and trade publications fits into your content marketing strategy. In today's episode, we chat with Lee Douglas, and we're covering advertising. Advertising has changed a ton in the past few decades, and many of us just don't know what's out there and what's available to companies as advertising options. Lee's an account director at Aspen Corps, which is a collection of brands that communicates with engineers. You probably know them from their publications like EE Times and EDN. In this episode, we'll talk about what types of products are available to companies to advertise and what kinds of marketing goals lend themselves to different products. And then again, what the process looks like when you're looking, working with an advertiser. So one thing that I think is important to note is um, in this series, we talk to PR professionals who talk about placing, uh, getting content in publications that mentions your company and working with editors up front and pitching. And in that process, you're you're spending the time and the investment up front to uh, get in touch with those editors to get that earned media, where here with advertising and the advertising discussion, you're spending that time and money to place content in front of the right people. Um, I love, love, love that when we talk to Lee in this episode, you can tell that he's not trying to sell us a list of products. He's truly trying to understand his client's specific niche audience and then get them the right information at the right time in the right format and doing that through ad products. Um, You know, on Content Marketing Engineer, we talk a lot about creating compelling content that converts technical audiences, and advertising is just a way that you can extend your reach to new contacts in your niche. So um, enjoy this episode. Near the end, Lee shares a little bit about budgets and kind of what you need to have in place before jumping into advertising. That's really helpful. And he also shares just how to get in touch uh, if and when you're ready. Let's jump in. Welcome to Content Marketing Engineered, your source for building trust and generating demand with technical content. Hi, and welcome to Content Marketing Engineered. As you may have noticed, I'm not Wendy Covey. I'm Morgan Norris, a senior brand and content strategist, and I'm hosting this media mini series for Wendy to take a deep dive into technical B2B media. From editorial to advertising to trade publications, we're gonna figure out when and how to pursue media opportunities to build your brand, gain thought leadership, engage with the technical community, and promote your products and services. I hope you leave each episode of this mini series ready to take action. Before we begin, I'd like to give a brief shout out to our agency, True Marketing. True is a full service agency located in Austin, Texas, serving highly technical companies. For more information about True, you can visit truemarketing.com. All right, on with the podcast. Welcome everybody to another episode of Content Marketing Engineered. I'm joined by Lee Douglas from Aspen Core, a media company that owns publications you probably know, like EE Times, EDN, and Embedded.com. These publications are a huge resource to our audience, and we're so excited to have you on, Lee. So thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm glad to be here. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So tell me, start by telling me, tell our audience a little bit about kind of your career, what you've been through, how you got to where you are right now, and then what it is that you do for Aspen Corps. Sure, sure. So, I mean, my, my career is, I guess I'm coming up on 27 years of, of uh, experience outside of, uh, outside of college. And, you know, I started out as a, as a, um, assistant media planner at a, at a large global agency in Dallas. And I was on the Pepsi account and we basically, you know, we didn't have computers on the desk. All of us assistant planners had to go to this like lab kind of place with tiny little Macs and, uh, wait for somebody to, to, you know, get off the machine to go do our media plans and, (laughs) <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. And, you know, we did things for Pepsi. I worked on Pepsi and, and some of the, the things that we did was like outdoor newspaper. Um, there wasn't really Internet advertising at the time. Yeah. Nothing, you know, broad. Um, we did radio, TV, local sponsorships and things like that. So it was it was interesting. And, uh, you know, I ended up going to another agency and then I started after the second agency, I went into more of the marketing communications on uh, at big companies around the Dallas area. Okay. Um, one of them was a was a um, technology company. It was called GTE. Now that's you know Bell or um, Verizon. Sorry. Okay. And uh, <laughs> you know I worked there for a few years, and then I ended up uh, going into media sales. 
And I went to work for a company called yellowpages.com during the dot-com boot uh, bu burst or bubble. Or, uh, and uh, I, I ended up staying there just for like a year because that, you know, I guess their business model wasn't that solid. But um, <laughs> so I went back to corporate marketing for a while. And then uh, I ended up going to uh, back into media sales um, after a, uh, a, good, a good long stretch at, at Texas Instruments. Um, and then, uh, and then I ended up getting back into media sales and going to work for Aspen Core, which at the time was UBM Electronics mm -hmm. parent company. So, you know, I think from, from, you know, the types of things I did over the career, I think, you know, the, the, the stuff at, at the agency that we were doing as far as like the outdoor and things like that, that's, that's kind of by the wayside for the, for the, yeah. the tech industry. I'm sure some people do them, you know, here we and there. We but, don't have a lot of B2B billboards going right. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just really not a thing. I guess it's yeah. more for, you know, the consumer audience and things like that. But, you know, when I was working at TI, we basically would go into a, a, a big conference room and this is just one group. It was the analog group. And we, we met with the agency once a month. And this was about 2002, uh, 2001. Okay. And the agency would come in and, and we, TI had committed to these certain placements mm -hmm. uh, in, in, you know, EE Times print and EDN print, um, embedded print, all the, all the sites that, you know, no longer have print. Yep. <laughs> and you basically go around the room and say, okay, who wants the back cover and who wants the inside front cover? And, you know, we were just kind of the different, you know, Marcom managers would pick, yep. you know, what they wanted and, and, you know, did it fit their budget and things like that. And then we just kind of hashed it all out. And, you know, it was, it was a lot of money uh, changing hands in there. And um, it, it was, it was interesting because, you know, that's pretty much what we did up until probably, I, I think it was 2003 or so mm -hmm. when we started because the publishers didn't really have any digital offerings. Right. Um, so we were just, you know, doing the print thing because that's what there was. And then they started to roll out these, they were static banner ads. A lot of them we just ran on the homepage and they were, they were throwing them in as part of your print buy. Okay. So they weren't even really selling them. Huh. You know, no one had in, the, in this industry had really kind of figured out like how to, how to monetize it and get traffic to their site and things like that. So after a while, you know, it's like, okay, we'll, we'll just do this little banner ad and see what happens and things like that. And, you know, one of the things that was working well at the time was eblast. So, you know, I, I was getting ready to, to start promoting a, like a lunch and learn type mm -hmm. workshop for one of the groups. And, you know, we, we had a, an eblast go out and we, we could, we had a reg online registration page for people to go to. And I remember, you know, the email went out at like, 10 30 a.m. So I got on the registration page and I started refreshing it and you could see it jump. The number jumps. So it's like real okay. time. And you're, you're sitting there like comparing it to print. And you're going, my gosh, look at this. This is, this is like immediate results that we can track. And, yeah. and this is kind of when it clicked that this, this is something else because, you know, in print, you just kind of had to believe, right. You have to believe that, that the people are getting to your page in the magazine, to your ad. Yeah. Um, and really the only kind of kind of metrics on print at the time were something called bingo cards and that was a little perforated thing in the in the magazine that you pull out and it was a postcard and you would you would go in and you would check uh, I'm interested in analog I'm interested in power and you would check what you're interested in and you'd mail it in with your address and everything on it and then you would be you would get content mailed to you <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah from these bingo cards and it's kind of crazy that you know that uh that that was kind of the response and it, it took forever and, and a lot of these would go back to the actual advertiser so you know they would sponsor it it would get mailed to them and then yeah. they would, it would fulfill some sort of okay I don't know, booklet or something to uh -huh. them, brochures yeah. And yeah, stuff, yeah yeah and I mean you, you know you could you know, talk to some reps who've been around the, you know a lot longer than I have in this in this space and they would say you know people would come they go on a sales call and they pull out a stack of bingo cards and go look this is how many I got you know so that was kind of like okay you know so so when we saw this digital thing so that was, that was <laughs> That digital campaign, that kind of first taste of digital success you had was you were at TI and then uh -huh. you guys had a publication send out an e-blast to their contacts? Uh, yes. Interesting. Yes, exactly. Okay. So it was like a third party kind of mailer. Yep. And um, 
I, I actually ended up calling the, the marketing director. I said, hey, come over to my office, check this out. You know, and so we're sitting there refreshing. And I think we sat there for like an hour or two hours, even oh just my like gosh. refresh, refresh. Yeah, it's so exciting. I it was, uh, yeah, and I mean, it was, you know, once digital kind of came around like that, people started to, you know, say everything's trackable, it's trackable, you know, and yeah. that, was, that was a big deal. And it still is to this day. That's great. Okay, so you brought up the two things, those static banner ads, and then email blasts on per, based on purchase lists. Right. Those are, I think, the two things that are ingrained in the mind. I, they're ingrained in my mind when I think right. of, oh, how did we go from, and, and they, they were the most tangible. How do we go from, you know, an ad in a magazine, a printed magazine to digital content? Okay, so we put a banner. Right. And then how do we go from, you know, list purchasing addresses and stuff will we go to purchasing email addresses and sending those. So those are kind of the two products I think that are, we're generally familiar with. Talk to me about what's available now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, we're definitely beyond the, uh, the print days here. I mean, we had a, a I guess our last publication was uh, electronic products magazine. And that, mm -hmm. I want to say that we probably shuttered that one in probably three years ago, but we still have electronicproducts.com. Yep. But as far as products go, I mean, we've got everything now from, you know, sponsored podcasts, uh, sponsored video. One of the things that I'm seeing a lot of people take interest in is uh, partner content, which mm -hmm. is sponsored content. You know, you'll see those on a lot of news sites and, and uh, mm -hmm. Yahoo or whatever, and you'll see, you know, content from our partner or sponsored content or something like that. And basically on something like that, the client provides an article, you know, that it is, mm -hmm. it fits the format. Our, our editorial team has to, has to approve it, you know, so it's not just a, a advertising fluff piece. This is sure. you know, still directed to, um, you know, the, the engineering audience and we want it to be technical ish, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it just can't be a big marketing push. So we've got things like that, um, that I see pretty good results for, and, um, we've got, you know, like I said, sponsored videos and we've got um, all the, the, the number of things that we have, it's almost overwhelming. Sometimes we have um, like white paper sponsorships where somebody can provide white papers. We promote them to, you know, the, the audience that they're looking to go to. They basically fill out a form and say, I'm interested in, interested in analog engineers or, you know, whatever, like yeah. IOT or something like that. So they specify it. Um, we can also do webinars and we promote it the same way with kind of a list that they check off. Here's who I want to be at this webinar. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, a sponsored white paper or a sponsored webinar, that's something that a company creates and then pays to place on your site. Is that correct? Well, when it comes to like the content, like an article yeah. or a white paper, that's mm -hmm. correct webinar we actually do the production of it they okay. provide the speaker and so they are providing the yeah. content you know like the the slide deck and, yep. and the presenter and things like that so yeah they 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 provide that and then we have all the production and and uh marketing services to back it up okay and then for things like a white paper then do your readers download that and then does the company then get that reader's contact information or how does that work? Yeah, that's, that's correct. So, so basically we'll, we'll post them on um, our site that's called tech online. It's kind yep. of the learning educational arm of, of um, EE times and EDN, mm -hmm. all of our sites really. And uh, what we do is, is if you want to download that paper, you have to, you know, log in if you're already registered yeah. or you have to create a profile. So that way, you know, you, you get the download and that information goes over to the sponsor and it's, okay. you know, it's all, it's all, you know, there's, there's all the terms and conditions and stuff like sure. that. It's like you, you could get contacted by the sponsor kind of thing. So, yep. you know, we're not, we're not trying to spam anyone, but if, right. they're, if they're, you know, interested in this paper, they're probably going to be interested in receiving more content or, or more information from that sponsor. Right. I think it's really interesting because the, the concept is exactly the same as, when you're looking at content marketing on your site, but in this through companies like you guys, we can further promote those white papers and that content to new audiences, right? So how do we, how do we attract new audiences over time? It's going to be through organic search, but how do we boost that? And so I think a lot of those products just seem like such a good 
fit for a technical audience. Is that our, I, you mentioned podcast sponsorships. I'm interested in what is, is that, is that the, what does that look like? Well, we've, we've got several different topics. There's one on embedded, one on uh, AI, and we've got one on power. Okay. And there's, there's one more that's escaping me right now. But basically, we, we have editors that, that run these, these podcasts, yeah. and they do them on a certain frequency, depending on, on which one. So they're building up this audience, right, of, mm-hmm. of its you know, editorial content. And they're interviewing people sometimes you know, to see um, you know, what, what kind of... Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of like you know when they interview somebody for a story only they're doing yeah. it in kind of a, a podcast kind of cool. format and then so what we've done also is we've we've come up with sponsored uh, podcasts where we can have a conversation with the editor and the client and then they can they can come in and they can actually sponsor the the content that we're, okay. we're promoting and sometimes you know they 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 might have a um, somebody from their company that that is interviewed or as part of it participates in it, but it's all, it all says, you know, sponsored by it's nothing. It's just like a sponsored sure. article in right. a podcast format. Yeah. Yep. But those are, those are growing, especially, you know, now since the the podcasts have been out for a while and, and they've, they've got a good cadence to them, we're seeing more and more people, you know, signing up and listening to them. So it's once you get that kind of base audience and you continue to grow it, that's, yeah. that's kind of when, you know, people start to be, start to become interested in sponsoring. Yeah, for sure. To be able to consume that information, even while you're on the go or, you know, is, is so helpful to people. We're seeing podcasts just continue to grow that audio content and video content as well. So glad to hear that that's, that's um, a key piece. So tell me about with these different products, how do different types of marketing goals tie to different products? So for example, I know there's not just a prescribed, here's a package, do, do these, these four kind of ad related activities, but what is, what does it look like to have some sort of goals and then translate those into appropriate products? Right. So I I think, you know, everybody that I work with, all my peers who who are in sales, uh, you know, we're, we're consultative salespeople. We're not trying to force the you know, product of the month on somebody sure. if it doesn't fit their objectives. So, you know, really it's, it varies by campaign, by advertiser. You know, if it's an advertiser that's been advertising since the print days or for 50 years and, you know, then they're online and they're doing a, a consistent campaign year round. I mean, their, their kind of campaign is going to differ from somebody who's maybe a startup. Yeah. Um, you know, it is if they're doing a white paper program or a webinar, you know, they're probably especially if it's on a, a topic that's mm-hmm. very trendy, like IoT or electric vehicles, that kind yeah. of you know, they're gonna see that kind of bump over somebody who's maybe a startup or something like that. So I, I think the important thing is to, like you said, they you actually you have to have goals for the campaign, whether it's mm-hmm. hey, we're doing branding. Okay, so don't expect a lot of clicks on branding, but you're right. getting your name out there. You know, sometimes some of the startups will use it to just kind of soften the market, get people accustomed to seeing their brand, you know, and mm-hmm. then it's like, okay, now we'll do a white paper. So I think it's important just to, to you know, understand what the product is that they're trying to promote, who, who, who is a fit on our yeah. side as far as audience and make sure, I mean, that you have objectives. I mean, sometimes people just go, we want to run some ads. Well, why? What are we trying to do? Are we trying to drive traffic to your site? Are we trying to get them to download something? Or, or you know, what kind of offer do you have? Do you have free shipping or a discount? Or yeah, there, there's so many different ways to go. But I think it's important to to start off with with the with the you know very basic thing. It's like what is our objective? What are we trying to do? And sometimes I think people just kind of fly right over that, right? It's sure. Because like, it's easy. You know, you get excited, you want to do something, but it's like let's let's define what we're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. What, and I'm putting you on the spot, um, but are there any numbers that you can share to give people an idea of the type of audience that you reach? Um, I mean, sure? we, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, we've got so many sites. I mean, when it comes to like EE right. and EDN and electronic products, EE web, I mean, I could go on Power Electronic News. We've got so many sites. It, yeah. it really varies by site. Like um, EE Times is kind of a blend of, you know, kind of high level executive news, Mm -hmm. but then we have something called the design lines Mm -hmm. that are focused on specific topics like power. And and those can, those can be industry news. They can be technical articles. Yeah. So EE times, you know, has a pretty good mix. EDN um, has a, has a very similar thing, but 
when you think of EDN, um, like back in the print days, it was yeah. kind of for the, for the engineer, the, the hands-on person who was designing or, you know, trying to solve problems, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, the, the, the sites still kind of follow that to a certain extent, yeah. because, you know, once upon a time, EDN and EE Times were, were competitors. Mm -hmm. you know, so they were the kind of the two big uh, print uh, publications back yep. in the you know, 90s and probably 80s, probably. Um, so, so we've tried to keep it where, you know, you've got the, the kind of exec con executive content on, on ED or E Times and technical content on EDN. But there, like I said, there is technical content on EE Times too. So, sure. you know, as far as, you know, how we, you know, direct people to, to, you know, different sites, that's kind of where we go on, right? It's like, who's the audience you're trying to reach? Um, so back to the question, it, it's, it's really difficult to kind of give a range of, of metrics because there's so many variables, right? It's like, right. Is, this a, is this an advertiser that was advertising for, you know, 40 years in print and now mm -hmm. they've been digital and they, they you know, do a, a big campaign throughout 12 months of the year? Um, are they in a, an industry that's really hot, like IoT, electric vehicles, power? It, there's so many variables. It's, it's really hard to, to, to say, oh, well, the average is this, because it does yeah. vary. And if you've got, you know, a startup kind of, company, you know, maybe it's just branding, you know, maybe they're right. starting off with the branding and, you know, you're not going to see a big click through rate yeah. for branding. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are, if it's just a brand and there's no real call to action, then, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be tough to, you know, to get clicks. And I think, you know, when it comes to call to action, I think that needs to be very clear because I, hmm. it seems like, you know, over the years, you know, things kind of go in and out of, of being in fashion or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And, and somehow it seems like some advertisers have stepped away from a strong call to action. You know, there's no, uh, there used to be what we called uh, when I was at TI specmanship, where it's basically the world's lowest power microcontroller or mm -hmm. the most precise uh, amplifier or whatever it was, right? World's lowest, you know, best performance, that kind of yeah. thing. But, you know, we're not seeing the specmanship anymore. And I'm not saying that's the only way to do it. But a call to action, give them a reason to click, right? I mean, maybe yeah. maybe it's free shipping, or you got a discount on your on your part, or a, or a development tool, or something like that. I mean, make sure that's in there. And it, it sounds obvious, but you know, you don't always see that anymore. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And you had mentioned um, earlier when we were chatting too. I wanted you to talk about just this idea of test campaigns and oh, yeah, testing yeah. different things out. Talk to us a little bit about that. I think especially for people who are new to the world of advertising or considering it, the fact that you've got options and you're willing, it's it's not so rigid, I, I think. Right. So talk to us about test campaigns. Yeah. And I'm a big fan and and I always recommend it to, mm -hmm. to people, especially people who are just maybe starting out with us. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm going to be honest, if, if your budget is a thousand dollars, we probably don't want to split that up. You know what right. I mean? As far as sure. But if you've got a decent sized budget, and depending on what you want to do, like if it's say you want to run a banner ad campaign, mm -hmm. I, we have no issue with doing like a couple of creatives to test, right? So we can, yeah. we can put an A, B creative. It's like this one offers this, this one is, you know, offers that and test it for a month and see which one performs better. Yeah. Um, you can, you can test like the banner design. It's like, okay, this one has our logo mm. um, on the first, first frame. And you know, this, this one has it on the second frame. There's things like that, that you know, are, are easy for us to do. Okay. And I, I highly recommend them because, you know, and it's not just about the banners, right? I mean, it's, it's about what are you offering and, and just rotate that in and out. Right. Mm -hmm. So I might get one ad and you might get a different ad. Yeah. And, and then at the end of the month, we kind of take a look and if, there, you know, sometimes it's, it's a tie or it's close enough where it's like, okay, which one do you prefer? Or you mm -hmm. want to just keep rotating them. Um, so I, I'm a huge fan um, of, of the test campaigns. If, as long as you have a, you know, a decent budget, sure. Because we just don't want to split it so fine on a smaller budget that it just, it, it, it's too spread out. Yeah. You don't want to lose impact across the board. Exactly. Um, okay. That's great. And I think that really lowers the barrier. Just take some of the fear out of like a set it and forget it, um, right. kind of opportunity. So, 
tell me about that leads a little bit into just what it looks like to work with a publication on opportunities like this. So again, mm-hmm. if somebody is like new to this space of advertising, what does it look like to just kind of dip your toe in the water? And yeah. then what does it look like to have a, like a healthy advertising campaign over time as well? Yeah. So, you know, as far as um, I've, I've worked in different industries and mm-hmm. in ad sales too, and it's it's been pretty good as far as, you know, consultative reps. Um, and, and we really kind of go down the road of, okay, so, so what are we trying to accomplish? And, mm-hmm. you know, what, what kind of products work? And then, you know, some, some companies have like an internal creative department or, a, yeah. or a design department. Some mm-hmm. people use agencies like, like y'all, mm-hmm. um, some just, you know, maybe just have a, have a buddy who does, who does banners or whatever. Yeah. Side yeah. Of it. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different ways where, where, how we get the materials and how we get the the campaigns uh, up and running, you know, mm-hmm. as far as, you know, back in the print days, it would be okay, four to six weeks before publication uh, prints, we'd have to have your materials in house. Right. Well, now it's, you know, since everything's digital, you know, we typically ask for like a, on banners, for instance, um, we want about a week to, mm-hmm. to get the materials in, to test them, make sure there's, you know, no issues. Um, usually there's not, but mm-hmm. we don't want to just throw something up in a rush and it not work or whatever. Yeah. So, so we, but we can, we can usually get them up in a, in a few days. But the, the thing that you have to remember is if it's a hot topic, you're trying like, if you're going to go on the IOT design line mm-hmm. and you want to get some impressions and you want to start running next week, chances are we're sold out. Yeah. You know, okay. Now, Good point. Yeah. I mean, so if it's, if it's a hot topic, you know, plan ahead because okay. The, the closer you get to that date, the less inventory we're going to have. And it, that's probably, I mean, it's true for all publishers, right? Yeah. So that's a good point. So if you've got a, an event, if somebody has an event they're trying to promote or a product that has a launch date that they want something specific for, you need to get that on the calendar early to make sure you get the space you want. Right. Um, right. Okay. In the right, right kind of eyeballs. That's a great yeah. point. And, and if something were to change, you know, there, there are ways to just push that out. Like mm-hmm. if, if the speaker is not going to be able to do that date now, and it's going to be two weeks from then we can push it out. I mean, it's yeah. because it's digital, it's not like it's going to print and it's like, uh Oh, you know, we printed the wrong date. This is all very flexible, but again, you know, I know there's t- some times where things just come up and you don't know, you know, that, that we need to get this message out quickly or whatever. But if you're planning a big product launch or something, a big event, you know, just just try to think, you know, three months out, six months out. I mean, the, the longer out you are, the more mm-hmm. inventory is going to be available. Okay. And in your experience, is there anything that you can talk to that's worked really well that you've just seen strong results from or good client satisfaction from? Mm-hmm. And then things that just don't work well, whether that's the the topic or the type of kind of ad somebody's doing, or if people have unrealistic expectations, is there anything we can do to kind of help set people up for success yeah. if they're entering into ads? Yeah, I, I think, you know, honestly, um, I think it really comes down to working with your rep. I think, you know, the people, I know that my peers at Aspen Core and most of the people in this, in this particular space are going to tell you, you know, that's not really our, our strength, or we don't have a lot in this area. I mean, I had a rep from another publication that, that was, was contacted by a client we both work with. And they said, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think that's better suited for Aspen Core. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. in the end, I mean, we're not trying to just, you know, take your wallet and run away for, you know, for a month long campaign sure. where we want long-term relationships. Yeah. Right? So for the most part, I think people who in ad sales rep roles, they're, they're trying to make sure that this is successful from the start. Right. And, and, you know, build on it from there, build this relationship where you're kind of the go-to person, the, the person that's trusted and that kind of thing. Cause I, I think the consultative selling mm-hmm. um, is, is something that people appreciate that, you yeah. know, I don't want the product of the month. It's like, here, do this, do that. But, you know, as far as, you know, what I've seen working lately, you know, that, that partner content um, seems to be a big hit. Yeah. Um, really. I, what, go ahead. I, I love that just concept because I think our, 
audience in general is is inclined to create really high quality technical content and build leads that way. Right. And um, often though, you're limited to one organic search and to yeah. your existing audience. And so just the way that you can use a reputable platform like you guys have to get more eyeballs on that content. And those eyeballs are the people that you want. Like you said, like let's right. segment these and find the right design line. And I love that. The fact that, you know, you're mentioning all these publications that you guys have, the design lines, all the different sites. And so if I'm working with you, I can say, you know, here's what we're trying to achieve and here's the type of audience we're going after. And then you can even recommend the, the site that that goes on or the platform right. within Aspen Core. There's so many options. And so that feels really huge um, just from a segmenting perspective. We know if we're going to we're not just going to shout our message from the rooftops and hope the right, right. people listen. Um, right. We would like to target those people specifically. And so I think kind of getting a boost from using advertising products can be amazing. Right. So I yeah, and it, you know, I, I think one of the other things that I've seen uh, working well lately too is uh, our um, audience extension programs, which we will actually run ads off outside of the Aspen Core network. So we'll basically go on, you know, there's a form to fill out, here's who I'm trying to target and that thing. Yeah. Like that. And, it, and it goes across a multitude of different sites. Some of them are technology, like, you know, uh, The Verge and things like that. Yeah. that you know, that are, that are things that technical people will read, you know, mm -hmm. off, you know, maybe on their off time or at lunch or whatever. Um, so we basically, and it could be on Yahoo Sports. So we have this targeting capability with these partners where we can run these ads at a very low cost on these other sites. And that's a good way to, to um, supplement your campaign. That's you know, a great to, point. That's a great yeah. point. So is that like an kind of an add on to something that somebody would already be doing with you? Yeah. I mean, you could do it standalone, but usually it's something that I just say, look, you're going to get X hundred thousand of of impressions yeah. off of our network targeting these same types of people, right? Um, for a pretty low cost, right? It's fifteen hundred dollars start startup, and you're going to get a hundred thousand dollar or a hundred thousand impressions or more, yeah. okay. depending on the selects. And it's very cost effective, and it's a yeah. really good way to to just you know kind of extend your reach. Yeah. And um, you know, I always recommend if you're going to do that, you should run stuff on our site too. Right. Because right. I mean, it's if they're on our site and then they leave and it's like they're on another tech and they're like, oh yeah, I saw that ad, you know. And right. So I, I didn't click on it then, but I'm going to click on it now. We want to capture them when they're most in their element of looking for information, which is right. what they're doing when they're on your site. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Oh, this is great. I love this. Uh one more, I have one more question. What sure. about um do like editorial calendars and things like that bleed into advertising or is it more that you've got these kind of specific sites for different types of audiences? We, we, you know, editorial calendars have been a hard thing to do after print. Yeah. Um, but we do, I mean, I haven't mentioned, we do still have a print publication in Europe. It's EE Times mm -hmm. Europe. Um, and then we have them in Asia too. We have EE Times China, EE Times yeah. Taiwan, EE. So we've got print publications in other parts of the world and they also have digital. But um, as far as editorial calendars, I mean, we've, we have some now um, that are, that are in our, in our newest media guide, mm -hmm. but, you know, keep in mind since it's digital, I mean, there can be a calendar, but they'll you know, shift. They're, they're not, they're not as rigid. Anymore. Okay. I mean, if there's like some big, you know, autonomous driving or AI story that breaks. I mean, it's like, they're not going to look at it and go, well, that's not the calendar this month. So we'll just, you know, that was last month. So too bad. I mean, they're going to cover the news, right? They're going to cover yeah. hot topics, but they do, there are some sort of guidelines, but in no way would I say okay. they're rigid, plan your campaign around this. Okay. You know, it's, it, it's, it's more of, you know, let's, let's, if you're, if you're interested in IOT, let's target that on our sites, yep. right? There's different ways to do that. And it doesn't really matter if it's on the editorial calendar that month or not, you know, yeah. if yeah. they're a good guideline, they're good to have, but I wouldn't, you know, plan an annual campaign around them. Yep. Okay. So lastly, if somebody, somebody listens to this and they say, I think we need to fit ads into our kind of overall plans and they don't 
have anybody that they work with um, for kind of other marketing stuff to reach out to you? What do they what do they do and what do they need to have? Like what ducks do they need to have in a row before they call you? What are what are the questions you're going to ask? What do they need to have answers to so that you can get that conversation going? They can figure out what's right um, for budget and what they need to do. Yeah, sure. That's that's um, that's pretty standard stuff. So, you, you know, budget is always great, but you do mm -hmm. have some people, especially that, you know, are new. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to necessarily share the budget. So maybe at least it's it's very helpful for a rep if you get a rent, right? right. Like between five to ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And you know, the, the, we'll, like if I get that five to ten thousand dollars or ten to twenty or fifty, yeah. or whatever it is, I will I will put together different levels right yep. it's like if you did this one this is what you would get if you get this one you know this right. is what you would get and then you know kind of the, the the more you spend you know you'll see different you know price breaks yeah um, you know so so there's there's value in that um it, as far as you know what what else we need it's like do you have a creative shop that you work with mm -hmm. you know, is this something that you can build on your own do you need assistance with with banner development or content development, things like that. And we can point them in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, really it's, we don't need a ton of information, but yeah. we also, you know, we need to know who's your target audience. What are you trying yeah. to accomplish back to, you know, the kind of the call to action and, and what are your expectations? Um, because it's important, you know, for everyone to kind of agree up front that, you know, here, here's what we're trying to accomplish. Definitely. How we're going to do it because there's a, there's a lot of different ways to kind of attack these different, you know, these different programs and, yeah. you know, some of it might be, you know, restricted by budget. Some of it might be restricted by audience. Um, you know, maybe we don't have that particular good, strong audience. You know, we typically do because we have so many brands and so many different, you know, uh, ways to, to reach these audiences. But um, it, it, I, I can't stress enough how important it is just to kind of get aligned um, from the start. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's great. So this is, people's permission to reach out to you can they should sure. they reach out to you directly or yeah, is there yeah, a sure. form on your site okay no I, yeah there i mean there is if they go to aspencore.com okay there's there's a um there's a contact us or yeah. you know they could they could reach out to me and i could if i'm not the person who covers that territory i can uh, point them in the right direction perfect great yeah. Well, we will include your information with this. Okay, and I, I think that's all the questions I have. Okay. This is excellent. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. It's, it's fun to kind of break away and do something different for part of a day. It's, it's always nice. Yeah, it is. And it's great for everybody to learn this side of the business too. And just advertising is an opportunity. So right. I'm glad for our audience. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me today on Content Marketing Engineered. For show notes, including links to any resources we talked about, visit truemarketing.com slash podcast. While you're there, you can subscribe to our blog and newsletter. And we've also got a book that Wendy authored called Content Marketing Engineered. It's about building and executing an end-to-end -end content marketing plan. I would also love your reviews on this podcast. So when you get a chance, subscribe, rate, and review Content Marketing Engineered on your favorite podcast subscription platform. Thanks again. Have a great day.